Actually, there is no need to introduce Bansi Sabu. He's eminent. Just can. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Please. Yeah. I think we should start with the debate. Thanks, Sanjay, Nita, for giving me this debate. Thank you very much. What I am going to do in the next 15 minutes, the time-restricted feeding, why it is important. There is nothing new except what has been forgotten. And since years, we are forgetting that ideally we are made to eat between morning time to evening, not late evening. And that is what we were not having any disease. If you just see before 50 or 100 years, people used to eat up to 5 or 6 o'clock. And that is what still people can do it. Fasting has been practiced through human evolution, and ancient hunter-gatherers did not have a supermarket or a storage facility or food available year-round. Traditionally, we used to eat two times in a day. And I don't know how many of you had gone to Mandir, Krishna Mandir. It is still the Raj Bhog is the first, which is the major meal of the day is at a 10 o'clock. 10 to 11 is the time for that. And the Shan Arti, which ends at 6 o'clock. And that is what traditionally we used to eat only two times. And before 50 or 60 years, also if you see, we were having only two meals in a day. The major meals of the day was at 10, it's a brunch, followed by a early evening dinner, which used to be at 5.30 or 6 o'clock. And see the incidence of diabetes, hypertension, non-communicable disease, everything is increased in last 50 years or 60 years only. And it is because of our late night eating habits. The fasting from time to time is more natural than always eating three or four meals a day. I mean, those we are not talking of, first to remain healthy. See, whatever ultimates has talked that, you know, how restricted calorie restriction can help the people who are diabetes or those who are obese to reduce their weight or to reduce their calorie content to make them non-diabetic or reversal of diabetes. But think of how to remain healthy. And that is what I'm talking of, time-restricted eating. The epidemic of non-communicable disease, if you start thinking that it started with frequent meal and increasing habit of late evening food and supper. Fasting is often done with a religious and spiritual reason. Even it is common across all religion. I am sure ultimates also must be doing the roja and we all do intermittent fasting. It's a very important, it's a part of religious thing but not work. They were also very important scientists and why they have made this intermittent fasting in our religions too. While fasting has long been a cleansing ritual for many cultures and religions and is an arrival on modern wellness, Syrian rises, some serious health question also. Intermittent fasting is a positive effect on health since it mimics the feeding conditions of human being in an era which preceding the modern civilization. People typically eat more than 15 hours each day. He had shown one data from an NEGM recently published in 2022. It was in from China. They normally don't eat more than 12 hours in a day. And where he had shown the data that it has not shown any benefit against the patients, I mean the persons who are having time-restricted feeding. But normally across the world, it is around now 15 hours. We eat from since early in the morning, 7 or 8 o'clock to late night or even middle of the night and that is what we are eating. It is less than six or seven hours we are not eating. Most of the time we are in a post meal phase and you can see simultaneously is those who are eating more than 14 hours a day, you will find the incidence of non-communicable disease are very high and that's a direct correlation has been seen in these patients or the persons who are eating more than 14 or 15 hours a day. When of eating the science behind intermittent fasting is it's not just calorie restriction. I believe that yes, calorie restriction. I'm not against that calorie restriction should not be there. But there is a science that's a metabolic switching. And that's what metabolic switching is. The energy restriction for 12 to 15 hours or more results in depletion of liver glycogen stores. Why God had given the glycogen store in liver? Because he was knowing that person has to do fast. I mean, it is required. If you are eating early in the morning with you have a glycogen already in the store, at the same time, gluconeogenesis is formed and you are eating more carbs, taking more glucose. That's the reason for the, your dysmetabolism. That hydrolysis of triglyceride to free fatty acids in adipocytes, production of ketone bodies, production of release of fibroblast growth factor, and all ketone bodies are actively transported into cells where they can be metabolized to acetyl-coenzyme-CoA uh, and 
reduce activity with up regulation of autophagy in addition energy restriction stimulates mitochondrial biogenesis and mitochondrial um, uncoupling also these are the some of the slides which i had just shown to intermittent fasting how it is helping for the reduction of the incidence like non communicable disease obesity type 2 diabetes cancer and cvd and this has been shown that those who are doing regularly or those who have a habit of eating particularly if they are eating not after 6 o'clock there are jain community in india they are eating strictly at 6 o'clock and it has been shown that they have less incidence of non communicable disease as well as cancer too these are the physiological effect of intermittent fasting again i am not going it's a busy slide i am sure that all of you agree and you will know that there are multiple benefits of intermittent fasting and that's what it decreases the uh, Uh, carbohydrate intake particularly decreases the risk of developing cardiovascular disease as well as the uh, uh, heart disease and cardiovascular disease and diabetes too this is what the median american eating pattern and that's what they eat from 8 am to 8 pm now it is no more 8 pm now they are eating up to 12 pm and this is not only american method it is all over the world people have started eating but even if you see the europeans their dinner time is still 6 or 6:30 the timing of a dinner is not more than 6 or 6:30 here in india we started having our dinner time is 8 or 9 o'clock and then we have middle of the night again we started eating the time restricted eat feeding mean it somebody has to eat between 8 to maybe 4 5 or 6 it's not more than 10 hours in a day he should eat and minimum 14 hours of a fasting is required that is what the examples of effect of intermittent fasting on a different organ system this is the sympathetic plasticity enhanced cognition enhanced neurogenesis reduce inflammation and enhance autophagy increase parasympathetic tone with the scene with those who have fasting time restricted feeding reduce glucose glucose insulin leptin total cholesterol crp tnf alpha interleukin 6 marker of oxidative stress and igf1 increase 30 hb and adiponectin increase insulin sensitivity at the level of liver ketone body production is high increase insulin sensitivity and enhance autophagy at the level of muscles there is a decrease resting heart rate at heart increase heart rate variability decrease blood pressure and fatty acid mobilization and reduce inflammation which is seen and this is published in 2017 not new even before 5 years it was published in summary it had shown that intermittent fasting improves cardio metabolic health Inter time restricted feeding improved insulin sensitivity beta cell responsiveness blood pressure oxidative stress and appetite this is one more paper now let me talk about i was talking till whatever i talk is regarding how to maintain the health those who are doing intermittent fasting they have already less disease now those who have already disease does it have effect yes effect of 4 to 6 hours time restricted feeding on a weight and a cardio metabolic health and here you can see there is a significant reduction in weight at the, as well as there is a decrease in hb1c2 there is a decrease in fat mass even there is a decrease in the blood pressure and cholesterol and fasting glucose level and uh, uh, adiponectin but there is a decrease in fat mass and decrease in weight too calorie restriction and intermittent fasting have a significant impact in the people with diabetes even intermittent feeding and fasting reduces diabetes incidence also this has been an animal study there are many more studies which has been published here you can see uh, these are small study as altmes was saying rightly that it cannot be like large study or randomized control trial or a long term data we may not have but still all those data had shown that there is a decrease in a1c and decrease in weight with the patients who have time restricted feeding this is one trial which had shown i mean say paper which is published with a mediterranean diet with a intermittent fasting in a jcc review topic of the week where it shown that the patient, persons who are doing intermittent fasting there is a significant decrease in mortality cardiovascular disease as well as diabetes too intermittent fasting and human metabolic health is significantly improved these are the intermittent fasting and aging which increases intermittent fasting improves the cognitive health these are the papers for that intermittent fasting have a data with the cancer prevention and with the patients who have already cancer the prolongation of the life these are the some of the new paper which are talked about the circadian rhythm and time restricted feeding and a healthy aging which you have these are the 10 benefits of intermittent fasting the protect uh, against neurodegenerative disease 
insulin level also drop and human growth hormone increases reduce insulin resistance and lower blood sugar level it reduces the risk of heart disease it reduces the blood pressure and cholesterol level it boost metabolism for uh, for fat loss it extend life span helping you for live longer reduce oxidative damage and inflammation in the body it removes waste uh, material from cells and it reduces leptin levels increasing intolerance and there is a comparison between two those who have intermittent fasting in compared to the people who are eating more than six meals in a day those who are skipping breakfast taking multiple meals in the day they get up at nine o'clock and start eating immediately after nine and then they eat till 12 or, not, or even midnight maybe after 12 too so those who are eating two or three meals a day eating breakfast which is the first uh, meal of the day which may be at 9 or 10 after getting up if they get up right time which is 5 or 6 o'clock they should take the first meal of the day ideally they should take once they get up after 3 or 4 hours for the once they get up and they should eat also the last meal of the day should be also uh, before they sleep before they sleep 3 hours before they sleep so this is what they should do everyone should do 3 hours once they get up and 3 hours before they sleep that is the time when one should eat they avoid late night meals increases protein content of the meal and 12 to 16 hours of the fasting will increase the metabolic activity increase the insulin sensitivity decrease total cholesterol decrease hunger which he was talking the time restricted eating will not help in the uh, hunger part but yes it decreases the hunger too it decreases inflammation optimize uh, autophagy and improve circadian rhythm too even the twitter ceo had also talked that I eat seven meals every week, only just dinner, and that dinner also early. And there are multiple such examples around the world. If you just write that time-restricted feeding, you will find the people who are really eating between this time, between nine, or there may be only two meals a day, the brunch and the evening early dinner, and that is what is required. What are the uh, intermittent fasting which you may not have the potential benefits are there but there could be harms as uh, Ultimus was talking if somebody is on a premix insulin you can't say him that you have to eat only between these two because the risk of hypoglycemia will be high but otherwise for a normal person or the overweight or a normal subject there are many more benefits also but yes there are some uh, difficulty to change the cultural feeding behaviors and what he had tried to show the photo of someone I don't know who so, you know, he was just trying to show the photo of someone who is taking the breakfast with butter and all those things. I don't know him, but, you know, it is really difficult to change the cultural feeding habits. So tomorrow, you know, today night, he may take again my photo with a glass of wine, but that's a different thing. Many experience changes in mood, extreme hunger, irritability, low energy, and a reduced ability to concentrate during periods of food restriction. And this may happen. This is why it is happening, because we are now born and brought up in a such an era, in an era where we are eating early in the morning to late in the evening. And now you are changing that person who is eating for more than 16 hours a day. Now you try to just change him on a single day that now you have to eat only for eight hours is real difficult but you can do it over a period of time it is doable many have obsessive thought about food maybe me few overeat on days without restricted calorie and that's very bad those who are doing the restricted eating behavior they should not have a cheating behavior i mean that's very bad for those because then otherwise they may not give the the data or results which we want to show there are other issues also they have the binge eating behavior you may have a large brunch or a large dinner and a ketoacidosis in an extreme case in gallstone which more often with a very low calorie diet and with very high fat and very low carbs too restricting calorie in this way may interfere with the female menstrual cycle physicians not trained to prescribe specific intermittent fasting intervention and this is most important thing unless we physicians are convinced you can't convince your patient I mean if I am not convinced for either intermittent fasting or calorie restriction or for anything I can't convince my patients too so I mean most important thing is I have to get convinced myself and this is the biggest problem we can't convince our patient also neither for calorie restriction nor for intermittent fasting too Last the long-term data is still to be generated as uh, yes my is over long-term uh, data are to be generated yes still it is because we don't have the long-term data with this i thank and once again thank sanjay and team giving me a 
fantastic topic which I learned a lot and I'm sure we both will have calorie restriction as well as we will decrease our time of eating from tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Altamesh.